bullet time is dead, long live bullet time. Since the days of Max Payne, which was the first game to feature bullet time, the Matrix-style super slow MO action, a multitude of other games designers have tried to create a gaming delight by including the mechanic in their game somehow. But often such games have just felt like a bolt-on or an unnecessary and unimaginative cliched addition. Super Hot VR, however, breathes new life into bullet time by putting a fresh spin on it. Time is essentially at a standstill until you start to move, then everything speeds up and the threats become real time, which makes for a thrilling take on a classic gaming style. Playing this way in virtual reality feels unnatural, confusing and extremely challenging, but that's exactly what makes Superhot VR so fantastic and why the game is the most frustratingly enjoyable that we've played in VR to date. Having a smashing time in slow motion. Superhot VR places you in a world full of angry glass men intent on killing you. You have to punch, shoot, stab and smash your way to victory as you fight for your life. The twist, of course, is that moving makes your enemies move too. And the faster you move, the faster they move. This means that if there are multiple enemies shooting at you, their bullets come in more quickly as you shoot back. Turn your head to assess where they are and you're met with a hail of incoming rounds. You soon learn that the trick is to use small, slow movements to ensure time moves slowly. Move like you're doing Tai Chi. That gives you the chance to see incoming shots and be able to dodge them. Q feeling like Neo from the Matrix, dodging bullets as they zip by, ducking punches, bending and twisting to some burbling bass line theme tune. There's nothing quite like grabbing a falling gun out of mid-air and downing multiple enemies with it. Problem is, however, the result of doing this is usually moving too quickly then dying. Over and over again. Rinse and repeat. Each level is broken down into multiple sections. Complete one without getting hit and you can progress to the next section. Fail and you're back to the start, ready to do it all again. We found it actually pays to fail because then you learn each section and how best to quickly complete it. We also found new fun ways to complete each section when we had a chance to replay. There's typically 5 sections or more per level. Which doesn't seem like many but the game can last an age if you end up dying a lot and having to complete the same sections over and over again. Each section of the game presents a new and unknown environment. You need to quickly look around to see what the threats are and what weapons, if any, you have to deal with them. Of course, looking around is counted as movement, so even a glance can be enough to increase the danger. This will soon lead to you carrying out ninja moves, like uppercutting a close enemy and then grabbing his gun as it flies through the air to quickly shoot his comrades while also dodging the bullets streaming towards you. We also found we would end up doing clever stuff like throwing guns through the air on purpose, so when the game switches section we could catch them again and shoot our way to victory. This is particularly handy if you find yourself in a hard place in the next section, but if the guns hit the floor then they break and shatter, so timing is everything. Stones in glass houses. Enemies are hilariously easy to kill in super hot VR. They break like glass, so throwing a bottle at them, for example, is sufficient enough to take them down. Objects such as bottles are scattered around each level that can be acquired and used, including bottles, cameras, ashtrays, knives, throwing stars. These objects are also capable of deflecting shots, as are your guns but dodging is far easier and more practical.